A uh, warm welcome to today's CERN Alumni Virtual Company Showroom. Um, those who don't know me, I'm Rachel, Head of CERN Alumni Relations, and I have my fantastic team, Simona Kriva and Jana Petrova. Uh, and today we're delighted to welcome Sky Italia to um, our virtual company showroom. So Sky Italia is a media and entertainment company established in 2003. It's part of the Sky Group, one of the leading entertainment groups in Europe controlled by Comcast Corporation, an international media and technology company. And Sky has changed the viewing habits of millions of Italians, not just Italians, I think millions of people around the world. It's synony synonymous with innovation. The company promotes responsible business, environmental protection, and the fight against digital inequality. And with the Sky Zero campaign, it's committed to becoming net zero carbon by 2030. Well, now, we're delighted that we have two speakers today from Sky Italia. We have Eleonora Calidi from HR Recruitment and Tommaso Bonte. I don't know if I've pronounced that. I tried to practice beforehand. <laughs> uh, so Tommaso, Tommaso is a CERN alumnus and he's a senior specialist in data science. Now, Sky Italia will also be hosting a booth at our upcoming CERN Alumni Third Collisions event between the 9th and the 11th of February. So please do come and visit them and the other um, companies who will be positioned in between the main auditorium uh, and the Papel du, the council chamber in the main building. Some will be setting up already as of the Thursday and they'll be staying possibly until the Monday. So do come and meet them in person, but today let's meet them virtually. So, uh, Tommaso and Eleonora, I hand over to you. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. How you say Sky is uh, one of the leading company in the television, entertainment co and communication services sector. It was founded in the United Kingdom in 1990 by Rupert Murdoch. It has experienced incredible international expansion operating in, in various countries, uh, such as the UK, Italy, Germany, Ireland, and all the other country you can see in this slide. Uh, we are proud to be part of an international American reality that is Comcast Group. And across uh, six countries, our innovative product connects uh, 23 million customers to the best apps and all the inter entertainment, sports, news, and arts we offer. Um, next slide, please. Tommaso. In Italy, uh, Sky was founded in 2003. Our company consists uh, of approximately 4,000 employees located uh, in uh, three offices, uh, Milan, Roma, Rome, and Cagliari. In this central box, uh, um, we can see the investments made in recent years. We can see 15.2 billion invested in rights, content, and original productions in the last 10 years and then 2.1 billion invested in the production of sky branded channels in the market in the last 10 years and approximately 1 billion invested in the italian film industry over the last 10 years next to this box uh, uh, we can see uh, how many sky original products uh, were were produced uh, between uh, two, 2022 and 2023 uh, we have 125 uh, uh, Italian and international Sky original products, of which 85 are Italian. Uh, among these, we have 15 shows, 8 TV series, 29 uh, documentaries and factual, 8 cinema and 25 sports. I have also provided other relevant numbers that illustrate the coverage of our service, for example, uh, between 2023 and 2024, we have over 9,000 hours of live sports events. And we can see that our channel, Sky Sport 24, has been the only sports news channel in Italy for the past 14 years. Now, um, let's move on to our products. We have Sky Q. Uh, SkyQ is uh, an advanced satellite television platform that offers an integrated viewing experience. It allows uh, users to watch, record, and playback content uh, in different home environments. 
uh, along with futurism, uh, like the um, ability to continue watching on a different device from where they left off. Um, and then we have Skyglass. Skyglass uh, is a smart TV designed and marketed directly by Sky. It integrates the Sky platform directly into the television. Um, this allowing uh, um, users to easily access uh, Sky content without the need for additional set top boxes. Um, then we, we see Sky Wi-Fi. Sky Wi-Fi uh, provides high-speed uh, internet connections to Sky, to Sky um, subscribers. And the company provides routers and connectivity services to um, ensure a reliable and fast connection for Sky customers. And the last one is Now. Now is an on-demand uh, content streaming platform. It offers a wide range of movies, TV series, sports programs, and uh, entertainment uh, without the need for a long-term contract or satellite installation. Now allows also users to choose uh, from various subscription options and offers uh, in viewing content uh, on different devices, such as um, smart TVs, computers, uh, smartphones, and tablets. Each service uh, has its own uh, uh, distinctive features, offering users various options uh, to, to, to enjoy the television and uh, on-demand content based on their preferences, preferences and needs. Um, now uh, let's move on to the values um, on which our corporate reality is based. There are five, and you can send, you can see them listed on this slide. Uh, we have forward-looking and restless, creative and action-oriented, customer lead and simplifying, collaborative and inclusive, fair and responsible. The company is committed to realizing these values by implementing various projects, promoting resp resp responsible business and uh, environmental uh, protection through the implementation of concrete projects on an international scale. It was the first carbon neutral media company in direct, uh, direct emissions and with the Sky Zero campaign, uh, it is um, committed to becoming the first net zero carbon media company in Europe uh, by 2030. In addition to having a sustainability commitment, the company is um, committed to having an ethical and social commitment with various uh, uh, initiatives uh, promoted by SkyUp and SkyCares, such as providing internet connection and free training classrooms on computer and technical skills and also volunteering experiences that employees can participate uh, in, um, on a voluntary basis. SkyListen is a service that allows its employees uh, to conduct their activity, activities fairly, ethically, and responsibly. Um, in Sky, we have also different networks so that our employees uh, can meet and connect with each other by implementing uh, activities in line uh, with the shared values of the network. The networks are three, and the first one is Body and Mind, encourages open uh, discussion about mental health, disability, and long-term illnesses. The second one is uh, Woman, Woman at Sky, uh, focuses on uh, gender equality for all, including our male allies and um, on broader intersectionality. And the last one is the LGBTQ+, um, is uh, open to both member, members and allies and is dedicated to inclusion and social change. I let Tommaso continue with the focus on the data world. I'm working in the Sky Data Hub department. Uh, what do we do in this in this department? Uh, we um, we have a, a vision, and our vision is provide value to to customers 
uh, by, by providing them what they want to see through the power of data. So how, how do we do that? Uh, basically, we invest in our platform, empowering it every day. We invest in our people. And in, we invest in our team, so in the organization in which these people are, are working. And what we aim to provide value to, to Sky, to the company itself, and value to the customers. Our strategy is, um, our strategy tries to, to answer the question, how can data provide value to the company and to the customers? Well, there are basically four main goals in our strategy to empower our uh, architecture, which is growing every day, um, working on reliable data, which are uh, increasing every day because we, every day we collect more and more data and the, the compliance of this data is a really hot topic. Um, provide value through the decision, uh, through insights, through analytics, and then also uh, to the, the the fourth goal is educate other colleagues which uh, who are not working in sky data uh, so that they can extract the, the the most of the value from the data and they can understand our work so basically there are five main areas in in our department and each one of these area um need the, uh, several and different uh, professional roles there is um, a data program management area with project um, project manager a data governance area uh, where uh, where we have a data governance specialist a data science area where where i work uh, with data scientist and partly machine learning engineer a data engineering uh, area where there are still machine learning engineer, data engineer, data architect, and data visualization expert. And then an area of analytics and, and insights, which is composed mainly by technical analysts. Google Cloud Platform is our main platform. We also leverage Tableau as a tool for visual, visualization and Colibra as a tool for data governance. We use uh, several tools. Uh, inside Google Cloud Platform. And as always, uh, the 80% of the effort is hidden in all the data wrangling procedure, in the, the building of the data architecture, uh, in the management of the sources, so that the 20% of the effort is spent in providing value through analysis and models. So how do we interact with our customers? First of all, analyzing the content that our customers watch. And this is a really interesting uh, part of our job because there are, not, there are not so many companies where uh, you can work exactly on movies, TV series, uh, TV shows, and it's, it's quite exciting. Then there is the um, uh, value management. So basically we are uh, trying to extract value from the management of our customer base. For example, trying to predict when a customer is going to churn or not, or uh, optimizing our commercial offer. And then there is a um, personalization part, uh, which aims to provide to each customer the best content uh, be it uh, movies or a TV series that this customer might enjoy. This is a focus about my team, the data science team. Uh, what do we do? Well, first of all, we, we provide data analysis and insights to all the business stakeholders. We develop machine learning models and we monitor the performances of these machine learning models a long time, and in case we retrain them to provide better value. This is a portfolio of our main uh, projects. We have plenty of machine learning models, so if you want to be a data scientist and work with machine learning models, this is the right place to, to come. 
We have machine learning models to um, for predicting customer churn, for uh, predicting the lifetime value of a customer, uh, for um, predicting a propensity of customer in uh, upselling or in uh, downgrade. Uh, we are trying to optimize our commercial offer through machine learning models in in a case of price elasticity. Uh, we are providing the, the best recommendations to our customer through uh, um, our recommender systems. Uh, we are extracting value and informations from text, uh, thanks to topic modeling and sentiment analysis. There are plenty of use cases that we are working on with data science tools. And uh, in particular, I want to talk to you about a project I worked on, a uh, content recommender system, just to, to give you a grasp of a typical project that uh, we are all working on on a daily basis in our team. This is a uh, content recommender systems, uh, which provide, uh, which aims to, to provide to each customer uh, the best movie to watch. Uh, it leverages uh, movies informations like movie synopsis or movies metadata and customers informations like customers view history, for example, uh, the movies that a customer watched in the last months, for example, and the time spent on those movies. Uh, we use um, a, techni a technique which is um, which relies on a BERT transformer model, which is a language model. Uh, and we also leverage a technique called collaborative filtering, which uh, relies on, on seeing what other customers similar to you are watching. So basically we use this transformer model to extract information for, from the synopsis of the movies. And we connect these informations with the um, viewing habits of other, other customers similar to you. And merging these two approaches, we are providing recommendations about movies. How do we do that? Uh, this is a little bit more technical. I don't know if everybody of you knows about word embedding techniques through transformer models. Um, basically, BERT is a transformer model, machine learning model, um, born in 2018. It, it changed a lot the um, the data science world, especially the natural language processing world. Basically, it it enables enable us to um, transform uh, to to turn synopsis of our movies into an array of data, array of numbers. And so, basically, we we turn the synopsis, the plot of our movies, and the gen of the movie, like horror, sci-fi, fantasy, in array of numbers. And we um, we process them with a PCA technique. So basically we uh, reduce the size of this data. And then we concatenate the num numerical arrays of synopsis and gender. And once we have for each movie, a numerical array describing that movie in its synopsis and in its genre, we are able to compare these movies so we are able to rank these movies according to their arrays. And this is an example, a real world example. This is, uh, in, in this case, it's about uh, series, not movies, because we, we use our recommended system for both movies and series. The series is NCIS, which is a series uh, about investigations in, in the army, an American TV series. Uh, and we are ranking the most similar series in our catalog according to NCIS. So the first one is a series about Agatha Christie. So it's an investigation history. Senor Angelo, I don't know in, in your countries how it is called, but anyway, I can assure you that it is investigations again, uh, Law and Order, Cold Case Without a Trace, Law and Order again, another series, all series about investigations. And as you can see, this is the most similar one because it, it has the highest rank, the rank, as a range between zero and one. So basically we are uh, able to say, okay, we have this series, which are the most similar series to this one. So if a customer have watched NCIS, 
which other series can we recommend to him according to the synopsis from the viewing history? Another technique that we are trying to, to develop is a technique based on word to vec I'm not going so much in detail with it because it's just experimental. Basically, uh, it's um, a technique used uh, especially with um, Amazon purchases. Like for example, uh, I have an order of many items uh, and I'm creating a numerical array with all the items in my order. In this case, an order is what a customer watched and every item in the order is a, a series that this customer watch. So even in this case, we are creating numerical arrays and we are clustering them and plotting them in a 2D spaces. And we can see that it kind of works because in, in this area of this plot, we have investigations series. We have, for example, again, Agatha Christie's or Law and Order. So the fact that they are similar, that, that it means that they are near each other. In, in this area of the plot, in, in, the, in the bottom area of the plot, we have kids shows. In the right area of the plot, we have sci-fi shows. But in this upper area, we have inv investigation shows. And in particular, in this island, we have shows we, which are um, watched together. I mean, a customer could have uh, watched uh, Chicago PD, Chicago PD, which is an investigation series, along with uh, Chicago Med, which is a medical series, and Chicago Fire, which is uh, also a, a series in the same uh, narrative universe. So even if the series do, do not belong to the same genre, if the, these series are, are, um, have been watched by the same customers, they are near each other. And it provides a lot of information, a lot of value to us to understand what our customers are watching at the same time. Okay, this, this was just an example. Of course, I'm open to more questions later. And I hope you, you enjoy it. And now I'll, I'll leave to Eleonora the, the duty to, to go on our presentation. Thank you, Tommaso. Let's now look at the recruiting process. The selection process typically involves, involves four steps uh, as represented here. The first one um, is the phone call with the HR recruiter who follows the position. In this phase, uh, um, we carry out an introductory interview to assess the motivation and provide you with information relating uh, um, to the next uh, uh, selection steps. Um, the second one is uh, an interview with colleagues from the team as Tommaso, <laughs> uh, who will assess technical skills uh, and knowledge of specific tools. In this case, there is the possibility of inserting a practical test, depending on the seniority of the position, um, additional technical tests may be required, which will be communicated during the, um, the first phone contact with the HR recruiter. And then we have the interview with the department head, or director and uh, HR participate to assist soft skills. And the last step uh, is uh, the moment uh, um, in which we return the feedback uh, and propose the offer. Here I have listed the currently open positions. Uh, we have uh, data scientist, data visualization engineer, data ops engineer and data engineer. Uh, in the tables, I have also listed the skills that are required. Thanks for the attention, if, yeah, if you have any questions. Fantastic. Thanks for that. I was wondering whether the little island you showed, the person perhaps, Tommaso, the people watching that love Chicago. Maybe that's the common yeah. theme. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this island. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically, it tells that people who are watching Chicago PD are watching yeah. Chicago Med and Things also Chicago Fire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lovely. That was great. Thank you. Extremely informative as well. Uh, let's uh, open the floor to questions. If anybody has questions, you can ask your questions in the chat or you can also ask them on camera if you wish. Giordano, I see you have a question. Please go for it. 
Just a curiosity, actually. So what's the actual uh, working language in uh, Sky Italia? English or Italian? Well, it's the, the the main working language is Italian, but we are uh, working quite often with uh, English and German colleagues. So it it can also happen that we have to, to speak English with with them. Sure. But, but between but, but, us, but, between Italian, we are we are speaking Italian. But the documentation of you know within the company, the internet or whatever, it's it's in Italian, right? Uh, mostly, yeah. Most, okay. Mostly, okay. yeah. Thanks. No, no, sorry, um, sorry. The the competition is 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 mostly in English. When uh, sometimes it it can happen that some emails are are in Italian, but all the documentation is in English, of course. Yeah. Okay. Because okay, it, it can happen that we we share our documentation with, especially UK colleagues. Sometimes also with, with the German. No, that, ones. that's fine. But but I guess somebody working there needs to know Italian, right? Uh. Well, um, especially it, it depends. We uh, had colleagues, uh, we we had uh, English speaking colleagues for uh, for a while. So um, not necessarily. It depends on the role that they are going to have. If they yeah. are going to have a role uh, which um, uh, implies that you are speaking with business stakeholder, it's it's better if you know Italian. But if you have an only technical role. You don't necessarily have to know Italian because if you have to code, uh, yeah, yeah. the documentation is in English and the code. You, of you course, speak is. the coding language basically. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So it all depends on the position that you are going to apply. All right, thanks a lot. If no one has a question for the moment, I oh yes, Nat Natalie. Uh, a question from Natalie. She um, is not able to come on cam, so I'll ask the question: Is it possible to telework or remote working? Is that something that uh, that uh, Sky um, allows or encourages? Yeah, it's uh, basically we have policy which um, allow us to work from home uh, for um, a maximum uh, twelve days a month, and we can choose which day we are going to our office or not. There, are, there is completely no pressure, so we can decide everything, and but no more than 12 days a month. Then, of course, there are exceptions in case, in particular cases, when, when you can extend these 12 days in 15 days. If you have maybe some parents you need to take care of or uh, children or so on, but mostly is it is and it I have I have to admit that we are leveraging it a lot because we we love the hybrid working mode. Thank you. Just before we pass to Michele, just one question. You said that uh, it's you can work from home. It, it, do you have to be at your home or can you be elsewhere? No, it, you can be elsewhere. You can be wherever uh, you like in the world. Uh well. I think that there is a restriction about working um, within I Italian borders, but I'm not sure about it because uh, <laughs> I think there is, but I'm not sure. I don't know if Eleonora knows more about it. Maybe for tax reasons, you have to work inside Italy. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, but except for that, you can work, of course, from anywhere in Italy. Thank you. Michele, please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, once uh, you have hired uh, a candidate, do you offer him a training period and how long it takes? Thank you. Well, of course, it it depends on, on the position. Uh, we we expect that some some skills, well, we expect that the, uh, the, the candidate already have some skills, the ones that we show to you, like Python, or uh, in the case of data scientists, I can speak about the data scientists world, of course. We expect that the candidate knows Python and have some machine learning experience. But of course, we expect that for at least the first six months, this 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 new colleague is, is uh, needs to be uh, educated in our standards, in our practice, in our business, most, mostly because you can be the most technical guy in the room, but if you don't know the business, of course, uh, you are not independent. So approximately the first six months are uh, uh, are the period where you 
you are learning and increasingly starting to be independent in your work? Because I am asking this question because on the base of my experience, people coming from my energy physics, they are familiar with Python and SQL, but not with the other codes that <laughs> you are asking for. Uh, maybe they need some period to be well, familiar we, with that. Basically, we, we use on a daily basis Python and SQL. So oh, okay. if they know that, they are fine. It's uh, and, the minimum uh, requirements. Uh, if uh, I may ask another question, I don't know if uh, uh, Rashid, uh, about the homogeneity of the raw data that you use to uh, make your choice. Do you uh, uh, refer only to the audience of the Italian public or uh, you take uh, uh, in consideration uh, uh, data from other countries? Well, uh, we mostly work on our customers' data, uh, which, which are a lot because we have billions of, well, we have millions of customers, uh, millions of customers. Uh, we sometimes we rely on external sources, which maybe are not directly connected to customers. They are sources like I don't know geographical data or. Uh, uh, other, other sources, but we work on customers' data. Sometimes it happened that we um, train the model on um, customers in other countries like UK, and we tried to apply those model on Italian customers. It was an experiment, so it's it's not uh, something that we do on uh, everyday basis. But there is as uh, a collaboration with UK and German data scientists. So it, it can happen. In, in the same company? Uh, you mean in Sky? Yeah, in Sky, in Sky yeah. Group. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? We have a comment uh, from Giordano that 12, 12, uh, 12 days is quite a lot. For those people who are interested in, in teleworking, it's quite a lot, so a nice uh, amount. I was wondering if, um, because Eleonora, you flashed up that some of the jobs that were currently available, and then you put the different skills that you're looking for. What if, um, if you know, you don't have, your skill set doesn't match all of those particular areas, it, one can still apply for the job, I presume, or these are necessity? Yes, this was good. So if, you know, say if you have 75% uh, of those, uh, it, it wouldn't preclude you from applying for the position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. good to know. For example, uh, about the data scientist position, I personally do not do not own all these skills <laughs> and, and I work with no problems. So they are an example. Of course, some are more mandatory than others, like Python and SQL, but others not necessary. For example, R, not so much. We are not using R. We, have, we haven't been using it in, in the last few years. But of course, if you know R, it means that you probably already have a um, data science mindset, of course, but it's not necessary, of course. Okay, thank you. I'm um, looking at the chat. I think as I, I have another question. I don't want to mo mo monopolize the, the Q&A session, but if um, I, I can go ahead and ask mine, I'd like to ask you both, uh, why should somebody apply to come and work at, at Sky? What is it that you particularly like about working in that company? Okay, well, uh, speaking about me, I think that one of the main reasons that I enjoy working here is because of data because we have uh, a that data lake, we have a lot of sources, we have millions of customers, and we have uh, data coming from customers, contents, calls of the customers, uh, external data sources, uh, technical data from our decoders, uh, uh, synopsis of the movies. So basically it, it is like, a, a, a fun park where you can play with everything and the uh, reality is really technical so we are able to employ the the most modern techniques 
uh, I, I showed you an example of movie recommender, which now is a bit old because it's two or three years old, but now we are working on, on large language models. You probably uh, heard about them. So there is the chance to employ a lot of new and modern techniques and the level, technical level of the people involved is quite, quite high. And um, everybody in the, well, almost everybody in the Sky Data Hub is able to speak English. So you're not going to have problems. Uh, as I told the documentation, the technical documentation is mostly in English. So you can come from anywhere and you can enjoy this experience. But as a technical guy, as a data scientist, I can say that the amount of data is the most attractive feature of our job because we can try machine learning models and data science technique on really big, big, big data. Um, I've been working at Sky for a short time. It's my first experience in the company, in a company. And the thing I found most uh, is that Every day uh, I learn many things uh, and there's a lot uh, of collaboration in Sky. Uh, hybrid mode um, also allows, um, allows us to, to experience the company and the colleagues uh, non-virtually. I think it's, it's very important. Hope you're able to hear me well. Just, uh, well, this... Um... Thank you for this uh, presentation. It was very nice to see a little bit the insights of this uh, of this experience of yours. Uh, I'd like just to, to put it in some specific words. Uh, my question, I think it has been answered partially before. Uh, so, for someone to be working in your in your company needs uh, essentially to be moving in Italy. Is this right? Yes or no? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, this is with, uh, what I wanted to ask uh, to be more more thorough. Thanks. Thank you very much. I think we don't have any more questions. So Simona has, ch has shared some links. Thank you, Simona, um, some links in the chat. So all that remains is to say a huge thank you to you, Eleonora, and also Tommaso. And we look forward to welcoming you. Thanks to everybody for joining us. And do make sure you come to Third Collisions and you meet uh, Tommaso and the other companies that will be there with their stands. Mm -hmm.